احنا كنا من بلادنا كنا راح نتوقع 15 يوم 20 يوم شهر اكثر من هيك ما كنا بس قعدنا خمس سنين الضغط على المرافق الصحيه مرافق المستشفى بشكل عام كبير جدا وفي مناوبات اذا كانت بايام العطل نوصل ل 500 مراجع ما بنقدر احنا نحكي يعني عن موضوع الاحتماليه انه الطاقم هل بيقدر يتحمل او ما بيقدر يتحمل احنا مجبرين على الشغل هذا يعني هم اخوتنا We cannot afford to have a lost Syrian generation Syrian boys and girls that don't go for schools for five, six, seven, ten years. That would be a catastrophe. There'll be a lost generation. When you have 300 hectares and you have with the pair of oxen, we need tractor. I need tools, I need implement, I need uh, infrastructure for support. So we decided to rent the three rooms and sleep all together. I think with this money, we can have a better life all together. Remember, part of the whole process that led to the Cuban Revolution was the fact that back in 1959, the Cuban economy was in the hands of American businesses and American interest. That Cuba is not coming back. Port officials from several American states have been making visits here. Already, government officials from Virginia and Louisiana have made future agreements to facilitate trade between the U.S. and Cuba. And now we've got 200 kilos of haddock quota per month. I could take my boat out in the first tow within four and a half hours. I could catch that. And if we was abiding to the discard ban, I would have to bring the boat straight in and tie it up until the next month's quote is allocated. And that would just, that would just put the whole port out of business. I'd love to employ 80 Cornishmen, you know, but come on guys, where are you? You know, come to me. You know, we've got work here. I, I think if the, the funding does dry up and it's not replaced, then yes, I think we will have to look at relocating. We want to create the Cornish jobs, but also supplement them and bring new people to the area. And what's been happening now is the sea ice is getting less each winter. It's breaking up earlier. Um, the feeding grounds for the delis are, are getting more and more challenged. The biggest fear that we have is a potential closure of the border. We would have to reevaluate our Spanish workforce um, and look at possibly uh, getting rid of the majority of our Spanish workers and trying to train up locals for these jobs, which would be very disruptive and take a huge amount of time to do. There are no jobs in La Linea. We only have Gibraltar as our main factory. Either you work there or you have to to find another way to survive. A short airstrip and a border crossing are all that separates the peninsula of Gibraltar from mainland Spain. The relationship with its nearest neighbor has been tempestuous in the past, at times making Gibraltar practically an island. There's only one option on the table as far as the people of Gibraltar are concerned. We are going to stay entirely and exclusively British. Brexit for us is red, white and blue. If you uh, compare with cows, to make the same amount of proteins as a cow, crickets need 25 uh, times less food, 300 times less water, and they produce 60 times less um, greenhouse gases. We're trying to be bold about it. So we want people to see what they're eating, and to get over the nerves, and because it's, it's only a psychological block. I do think they are going to become a big part of our diet. I don't think it's necessarily going to be how we serve them, whole insects fried up. And what's super interesting is actually the fact that we've had, I would say about 50% of all vegetarians were willing to eat cricket flour, so despite it technically being an animal, you know, many people don't really view it as such. How long do you think it's really going to take before we see cricket bars at, say, our local supermarkets? 
I'm hoping to get into supermarkets at some point next year. So the future is... The future is almost here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>